Hey everyone, today we're going to be painting a rustic barn, like so. Let's begin. So I did a little bit different this time. I, uh, I started out by outlining the entire scene with pencil. Usually for pen and wash, I start it with pen. And I think I was originally gonna to try to do it more of a loose watercolor style. And then I thought, eh, screw it. We're just gonna do pen and wash. So later on, I'll come back over with pen. Uh, so you'll see the entire piece kind of play out a little bit differently than how I've normally done it, but it's essentially the same exact steps, just a little out of order. I am wetting the entire paper uh, and starting with the sky first. Make sure your brush is entirely clean of all paints or else you will lay down a base wash that you don't want. Um, but I opted for gray and yellow tones for more sunset uh, vibes on this one. And I think it worked out really well. I'm also letting that yellow bleed into the barn. Uh, and I think that helps sell the idea that it is a sunset that's kind of like a nice little underpainting. And then I'm painting a very light wash of green and brown in the grass and the trees. My entire paper is still wet, so the colors are bleeding into different parts, which can be frustrating if that's not what you want. So make sure you're only working in the areas that you would like by wetting those first. So if you're laying down a base wash of color, I would let that layer dry, then begin to work on your next layer, or else those colors will bleed into each other and it can be infuriating if it's not what you're expecting. If not, I opted to skip that and just kind of work with the layer still being wet just to see what happened. And of course they bled into each other, but I kind of like the result. Trees, let's, let's talk about trees. Those can be a little, a little frustrating um, and the I have better results if I let my brush strokes be more uh, unplanned and more random. That's not, I'm not trying to do big sweeping brush strokes. I'm trying to do little blotches with my brush um, and that makes it look like leaves. I'm also trying to leave a little space of white in between each of those blotches. And that helps me get better trees, I think. I'm coming back through and now building up contrast, adding in some of the window shapes and shadows and more redness of the barn. Um, it took me a while to be really be happy with the colors in this piece. Uh, and I think it was just something I wasn't used to because I usually start off with my pen. So it took a while for me to really start liking this piece, but the end result's pretty cool. Make sure you dry your layer before you lay any pen down because your pen will act just like a watercolor and start bleeding everywhere and start will, will start blooming and exploding into the watery areas. And it will 
kind of ruined the point of your pen. It'll, it won't work nearly as well afterwards. I've ruined many pens doing this. Um, so, like I said, I did it a little backwards, but that's okay. It still worked out. Uh, I'm adding in my outlines now afterwards, and I think I might try this on future pieces too. But um, yeah, my, my layer is completely dry, therefore I'm having no issues with bleeding of my pen or ruining it, and that's always a plus. Now that we are done with our pen work, for the most part, we'll come back over a little bit later, but I'm building up those tones even more. For the shadows, I'm adding in some blue to accentuate, what's a fancy word, those shadows, and trying to think of where my light source is coming from. So my light source is coming from the top left of the page, and I'm applying shadows wherever that light would cast a shadow, obviously. I'm also adding in a little bit of rust spots on the roof with a little bit of brown and red. Uh, making it look all rustic and beautiful and stuff like that. So have fun with it. For the trees in the background, I'm still adding in some shape, um, some element of shape to them, but I'm also not being as specific as the trees in the foreground, just because you don't want those trees in the background to pull away from your foreground elements. So leaving those shapes pretty, pretty basic in the background and non-intrusive is important for depth in your painting. And we're just working on building up tones for the rest of the piece, uh, adding in some, some differing uh, details in the mountains in the background and then coming through and drying my layer, finishing up any final touches, trying to darken some colors that I thought needed to be more dark, adding more contrast in, stuff like that. Um, so this last part of the piece, I always say, could be the best or the worst. So make sure you're not overdoing it and you're not underdoing it with your details. So it's a fine line to walk. Just listen to your heart and it will work out. <laughs>
And that is gonna wrap it up. I hope you guys had fun with this. Please let me know how it went in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and also subscribe. Share this video with all your friends, all your art friends. We're building a cool community. Um, and I just love seeing all your faces here and interacting with you guys. So please let me know how it went and if you had fun or not. And I will see you guys next tutorial. Thank you.